Today, I will be building a monochord, an ancient instrument that helped the Greeks understand musical harmonies as well as ratios in other areas, such as architecture and science. Before we begin building, here is what you will need to have. One long wooden board. One board of thick and slightly softer wood. One eye bolt. One nail about one inch long. Four bigger nails about two inches long. One screw about two inches long. And a guitar string. For the tools you will need, a hand saw, a hammer, a screwdriver, a ruler, and some multi-purpose glue. So now we can start building. Measure the softer piece of wood to create a long rectangular cube about one inch wide to be the monochord ends. Draw a line in the middle. Then in the middle of one half, make the eye bolt hole by first using a long nail, then a screw. If you have a drill, you can do it in a second, but if you do it like me manually, it might take a while. And finally the eye bolt. Insert the smaller nail through the guitar string's end and nail it into the middle of the other half. Sew the wood into your two rectangular cubes. I'm building a monochord. A what? A monochord. You know what that is? No. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Have fun. Nail the rectangular cubes to the two ends of the long wooden board. Sew another two rectangular cubes, much thinner though, to be the monochord bridges that will level the string. Glue them to the surface. Tie the string to the eye bolt and twist until the string is stretched and you have a clear, nice pitch. Sew a little triangle from a piece of wood you find, just a tiny bit higher than the string when stretched. Place it under the string in the middle of the board, and we have our monochord. Now, when our monochord is looking beautiful and ready to explore, let me tell you some of the most interesting things we can discover with it. You will notice that as you move the middle three part, the pitch changes. The question is why, and in what way this change is created. The answer lies in the way in which the free part divides the string. Let's understand. 
When I divide the string in two by placing the free part at the center, I hear the same pitch as the open string, but an octave higher. Now I will divide the string in three and place it on the third. I hear a fifth above the original note. When divided into four, I hear the same original pitch, but one more octave higher. And five will give me a third above the original note. Can you guess what we got? A major chord. Ma 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 With the aid of this little magical device, Pythagoras discovered that every note has what we call today an overtone series. A bunch of other and much, much quieter notes that are hiding inside the main note and give it its special ring. The overtones correspond with the notes we heard when we sliced the string in two, then three, then four, etc. This is why certain combinations of notes, like the major chord, sound so appealing. It is because they are made up of the very first overtones of the fundamental note, hiding inside it already. Thank you for watching, and keep on exploring the magic of music.